Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. A little bit mixed up today, but we'll get through it, don't you worry. How's it going today? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, this is our stock market show where we go over the good, the bad, and the ugly about the uh, stock market. We're going to cover some actually uh, pretty interesting things today. Well, I think every day is kind of interesting, don't you? Uh, so we'll be sure to cover that for you. If you're one of our customers, uh, Wine and Wealth tomorrow, we're going to cover the different investments for your different accounts. How should you place those different investments? And if I could, real quick, if you're uh, also one of our customers or not, our dojo is live up and running. This is our video library here where we actually have all kinds of different videos that range from our wine and wealth replays to what we call geeky videos. Um, also some basic stuff. So if you're one of our customers or you're thinking about joining us, know that we have a ton of uh, great videos in there for you. And uh, happy to, of course, help. We'll be expanding on that, by the way. We've already moved on to the second part of the dojo, which is going to be like a market dashboard. So you can kind of see, uh, and I can use the charts and everything to show you. So keep us in mind here at Jazz Wealth. I'll ask you one question. If you're an average investor, what financial advisor is asking for your business? They're not. <laughs> they don't want to work with the beginners. I'll work with everybody. I want to teach, educate, and support, of course. That's my sales pitch for the day. Um, hey, let's get started here. So if you look at the uh, markets off to your right, you can see a little bit of a down day today, and we're going to kind of elaborate on that as we go, so pay close attention today. Uh, the Dow down just a little bit. Small down day. S&P, small down day. NASDAQ, not bad. Tiny little down day. We can all live with that. As we've been saying, as the markets move higher, if they do pull back, as long as they do it calm-like, and as for the February stats that our investors uh, know about, you're okay with that, right? Is if it's not crazy and scary. Uh, it is still earnings season. We have 55% of the S&P 500 has reported and um, almost 70% of those companies have beat on earnings. Guidance, not so much. Uh, maybe something we could cover every day or uh, another day. Uh, most areas of the market are a little overbought in the short term from a technical perspective. Uh, we'll cover a few of them here in a minute. Um, and uh, actually more than half of the S&P 500 stock-wise is technically overbought in the short term. Let's take a look at the charts here and see what we got if you like looking at this stuff. Uh, our candlestick class is in the dojo, by the way. I'm sure you've heard me say that before. Uh, here's the S&P 500. So this is the futures contract I'm using to show this today. It has moved right back into the 200-day moving average. It is technically overbought just by a skosh there. And so um, traders just basically saying, hey, we've had a great run higher. We're running into what is a known overhead resistance point, whether you believe in it or not. And so a lot of people saying, I think I'll just wait. I'm not going to buy anymore just now. Let's see what happens. And so you would expect to see a little pullback from here. Wouldn't be a big deal, of course. Uh, the uh, Dow doing the same thing. This is the Dow futures contract with bursted just above the 200 day moving average. Uh, you could see sort of clear skies. The problem, of course, is that um, overbought, right? We've, we've gone up maybe a little too far too fast. You're starting to get confirmation of that. If you look in the background, you could see the volume. The number of people willing to buy on up days has been slowly getting to be less and less. On the flip side of that, the number of people willing to sell has also been go, uh, getting less and less because there's been no reason for them to sell. There's been no panic, no scared days, nothing too crazy. Uh, and you have a, basically the same picture on the NASDAQ, uh, uh, the NASDAQ here. Here's the NASDAQ 100 futures contract back up into the 200 day moving average and taking a little bit of a break here. So that's the major markets. Let's go into the individual sectors. Today, the semiconductors stole the show semiconductor chip stocks, however you want to say it. Uh, they all had a great day. If you look at the S&P 500, sort by the best performing stocks in the S&P 500, you're going to notice a lot of semiconductor stocks uh, higher on the day. That's part of the reason why the S&P 500 was basically just a small change there. We always say banks and tech stocks, semiconductors in particular, uh, help the markets move higher. When you have one, banks, which are not doing a whole lot, and semiconductors, which blasted off today, you kind of have a recipe for a tug of war there. I'm going to explain why this is a bit of a problem in, in, the, um, uh, in the short term here. So um, if you're in the semiconductor space, you're going to notice microchip. 
uh, microchip, um, the symbol is MCHP if you're following along. The CEO actually came out and said, this is the bottom, right? What you guys are looking at right here, price-wise, is the bottom. Uh, that's the CEO's comments, not mine. That certainly helped the sector. You had Broadcom breaking out to new highs here today. Xilinx, my favorite to look at because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just such a cool name. You know what I mean? Well, I had Xilinx. Uh, anyways, broke out to new highs again today. Very, very strong there. Uh, Skyworks, SWKS moved back up into the 200-day moving average. Nice little bottom there forming. And, and, oops. and then the other names that are in the space there. You've had AMD with a great run lately. Just a tiny little pullback there. Uh, Intel, nice and sort of quiet in there, letting some of the smaller chip makers uh, have their fun. And Texas Instruments, TXN, finally breaking above the 200-day moving average. Here's the problem. Ready? Pay close attention. The banking stocks, a little overbought. Hinting at pulling back, volume declining, buyers less interested in the super short term, right? That's a problem. We need the banking stocks to move higher if you want the markets to move higher. As of the last few days, they've sort of, sort of paused. The second part to the problem is the semiconductors. I just showed you a symbol SMH if you want to just look at an ETF to show you that. This is uh, overbought here in the short term. If you need both of those to move you higher, move the markets higher, we've got a little bit of a problem. If the semiconductor stocks decide to pull back along with some of the big tech names and the banking stocks are already hinting that they'd like to take a break, you have a recipe for a market that would like to take a break. It's called a top-down analysis. Uh, in this case, we're, we're going bottom up in a way. We're looking at the semiconductor stocks. We're looking at the sectors as a whole. We're then coming up to the market and going, oh no. The supporting foundation of the overall markets here, the individual stocks, of course, uh, are showing that they want to pull back. Looking at the individual sectors, they are also showing that they want to pull back, which then means the market, the indices, the things that everybody look at, looks at, are going to most likely pull back as well. Not my opinion, just kind of laying out the groundwork for you. You guys can do with it what you want, but let me take it a step further. Gold mining stocks. I know that's not really like an interesting sector. It's not that correlated if at, at all lately. Um, but those extended in the short term. Emerging markets, little extended in the short term and have already started to pull back. Semiconductors, SMH is the symbol I'm using. Tech stocks, XLK, if you want to look at that, a little extended in the short term. You can make an argument that transportation stocks are a little extended here in the short term. You can definitely make an argument that REITs, uh, ICF is one that you can use. I've been using this the last couple of days to illustrate this. Uh, you can certainly say that's overbought in the short term. Put a few of those big puzzle pieces together that make up the broad market, and hopefully I haven't bored you to death. You get the idea that the markets are really okay to pull back here. No one would cry if the markets pulled back a little bit. That's my sector analysis for you for the day. Uh, you want to look at oil. You got the price of oil taking a break here after breaking over the $54 an era, $54 a barrel area. And um, it sure looks like oil wants to consolidate in this area. It's a comfort zone for the price of oil. This is the futures contract, by the way, for the price of oil the front month. And here's the thing. You have an area of uncomfort. You know how we talk about the 20 moving average acting as a rubber band? Well, here you go. It moved too far, too fast to the downside, snaps back a little bit, but this 52 to 54 area, you can see is a area of comfort for the price of oil. What it means is not too many people in the short term have gains and not too many people in the short term have losses. We can make arguments for long term investors, but you get the picture. So in the short term, if nobody's really gained enough for them to want to sell their position and nobody's really lost enough for them to get scared and want to sell their position, doesn't matter what side you're on, long or short, you really have no reason to take any kind of action. And for that reason, it looks like oil will just sit and chill a little bit until we get some kind of trade news, uh, OPEC news, inventory news here in the States. Uh, that was today. We don't really have a lot to go on there, so uh, that's it. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, individual stock news. Disney basically finished the day flat. No, it did. It closed down about a percent. Um, after reporting earnings, they beat on earnings nicely. Revenue beat as well. Uh, apparently, uh, parks are busy here in the States. They added more subscribers than normal to uh, ESPN, which is now a subscriber base there. Uh, ABC, that their uh, broadcast network is doing well. Lots of good things there. Here's the problem from a technical perspective. If you're a short-term trader, can you just kind of like visualize? Oh, I can draw it. My line's right here. Oh, I messed it up. Sorry. 
Sorry, someone leave a comment below. This show's too long, man. Let's just, just take it to the point. There you go. So you got a little downtrend line here uh, from a technical perspective. Doesn't matter if you believe in it. The point is that everyone else believed in it today. And so the stock gapping higher into that trend line basically tells short-term traders, hey, take your profits. So that's all you have there on Disney. Otherwise, great earnings announcement, everything else good there. Snapchat, higher by 22%. When was the last time, if ever, Snapchat could say that? What an impressive day. Volume way above average, um, almost the highest volume in over a year all because the company lost less money than people thought. They still lost money. It's still a losing bet, but they lost less. Also, their daily active users was about flat, so they've been having some problems there, uh, keeping their daily active user number nice and high. It actually beat by just a touch, so nobody uh, gave them a hard time for that. It actually caused Raymond James to upgrade the stock to... Raymond James, where you at, man? Um, to market perform from underperform. That's almost like them saying go buy the stock, but not quite there. You got nine analysts with a sell rating on Snapchat, so they're still negative, and four with a buy rating as of today. So uh, that's that one. Okay, on the downside today, if you were to look at the S&P 500 and see which names were the worst performers, you're gonna notice something um, that they all have in common. They're all gaming stocks. They're the, you know, the, not gaming like casinos, gaming like electronic gaming. Electronic arts, uh, bad. Well, here's the thing with electronic arts. Uh, the company reported better than expected earnings. Revenue was a little light, sales were a touch light, um, and the CEO was pissed. He was mad. He went on every TV channel that has to do with finance and said, you guys all got this wrong. He said they got it wrong uh, like six different times basically just trying to say, hey, we beat on earnings. Quit giving us such a hard time. He was asking for a little help from Wall Street. Didn't come today. Uh, ATVI, there you go, that's another one. That's a fresh technical breakdown. That's a horrible, horrible chart pattern there in the short term. Uh, day traders all over that one today. You can see the volume just going like crazy. If you're a day trader and you see that again in the future, you short that and you day trade the bejesus out of it throughout the day. That's, a, that's not all of what happened today, but they certainly didn't help. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, Apple got a new chief of retail. That's the third in seven years. If this was Tesla, it would have made front page news. Not really that big of a deal today. Uh, Apple also extended in the short term. Spotify, uh, SPOT, stock was a little bit lower today. They beat on earnings, I believe. Yeah, they had good earnings. Uh, they bought Gimlet and they're buying Anchor. So they're going out there and saying, we're going to buy podcasts. So we're a streaming music service, but we're going to buy podcasts and start developing our own unique content. I called them. They're not interested. Uh, Tesla down just a touch today. Uh, they lowered the um, Model 3. Uh, the price of the Model 3 is now down again, second time this year, uh, down $1,100 more. If you've been shopping, you're thinking about a Tesla, you're going to save $1,100. Uh, United Airlines uh, in the news, they're going to add more premium seats uh, to their business uh, routes, right? So all the very common business routes, they're gonna fit, uh, retrofit about 100 airplanes there. And then if we stick with airlines real quick, Spirit Airlines, uh, they matched on earnings, they beat on revenue, uh, just okay. Nothing too exciting or explosive from them. So a lot of, I think, investors were looking for this to see, I think either way, if the stock gapped higher today because they had great earnings, people were gonna sell that anyways. Look at the gain they have. What a sizable gain here, even through the market weakness. Uh, so uh, Spirit Airlines, a uh, little bit lower today. I think either way it was going to be lower. Uh, 3M, this is one of our positions in our dividend fund. Uh, they raised their dividend by uh, 6%. You're now getting $1.44 per share. Uh, great little dividend stock there, and now you're getting paid a little bit more. After hours here, you got Chipotle reporting earnings easy beat on earnings, uh, like a huge beat on earnings there. Uh, revenue came in much better than expected as well. The interesting thing there was, I thought, their digital sales. Uh, that was up 13%. Digital sales now making up 65, I'm um, sorry, now making up 13% of their overall business. That's up 65%. Nice little beat for them uh, for Chipotle since that new CEO took over. I think I could have done it better, but hey, they didn't ask me to I applied. They didn't ask me. 575 is where the stock's trading at. Huge upside tomorrow if that stays this way. Do you like iRobot? You know, the, the little thing that you spend a lot of money to sweep your uh, house while you're not there and then the dog just eats it anyways. Um, way beat earnings. I mean, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. Um, earnings just came out. They beat on earnings by a mile, beat on revenue, raised their guidance, their tax. Uh, they got uh, some help there from a lower tax rate. 
Um, that's probably what people are going to focus on tomorrow. You'll see in the headlines the old tax rate deal there. Well, I think I pretty much covered everything. You get the idea about the markets pulling back, and now you know not to be surprised. With me? Oh boy, I see some gaming arguments going on there. I'm 100% out of that. I could talk about the fundamentals all day. I could talk about the stock, the technicals, as far as the games. I couldn't tell you what one company makes versus another. I, to put it this way, listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. For Christmas, do you know what I asked for? And I got it, and I'm so excited. It's been the biggest time waster of my life. The Nintendo Classic. Like, the original Nintendo shrunk down into the new digital form so you don't have to stick the game in there and slide it and then, whoosh, come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I've been playing that like crazy. Mario 3, got it all up here, man. And you can save, by the way. I'm of a generation where you started playing a game and if you stopped, you had to start over. You couldn't save it. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm old, I'm old. Hey, anyways, that's all I have for you. I'll quit wasting your time. Don't feel bad for me. Uh, check us out, jazzwealth.com. We uh, manage portfolios, our own portfolios. You can see them all listed in there. And uh, of course, we're here to help. We'll be back tomorrow to help. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, you got it. That's all I got. See ya. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Hey, wait! Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. 